as Netflix drops the first season of the highly anticipated international anime series about Philippine folklore, legends, and myths. We've decided to ease your way into the mysterious and spine-tingling other world of ours. Check out these profiles of the monsters and creatures we've seen so far on Budgetan and Cajo Baldissimus 13. First stop is the Babaylan. During the pre-colonial period, each barangay or rajanete had a Babaylan, a priestess that spoke to deities, anitos, ancestral spirits, or the supreme god that they worshipped. Bathala for the Tagalogs, Kanlaon for the Panay Island settlers, and more. Up to this day, there are still some tribes ritually led by Babaylans. Their more mystical tasks include creating healing potions for the sick, praying for the dead, giving blessings to the tribe warriors, Mandirigma for the Tagalogs, Bagani for the Manobos, and warding off evil spirits for creatures that threaten their estate. Second stop is the Duendes. Translated to English as dwarves, the Duendes are Filipino mythical creatures that are known for being highly magical, playful, and environmental guardians. The name came from the Spanish phrase Dueno de Casa, which means owner of the house, as they are believed to be living under earth mounds that look like anthills but they are also believed to reside in trees, mushrooms, and even the nooks and crannies of your houses. The question is, is it friendly or not? Well, that totally depends on your behavior towards them. A common Filipino phrase, tabi tabi po, is used to excuse oneself when wandering around the forest or earth mounds. Hence, Dwarves demand respect from strangers and one could show it either through prayers or sacrificial offerings. But those who have the audacity to destroy their homes would definitely face the reckoning as dwarves are known to be heartless when it comes to their courses. In Chese, we find Amang Paso, a red dwarf, yes, dwarves of color coding related to their buddhi or conscience, who assist a young actress to stardom. So yes, a dwarf can also be friendly and bring you good luck when you treat him kindly. Third stop is the elementals. The concept of elemental creatures is actually foreign to us. But yes, our ancestors also believe in the existence of creatures associated with specific elements such as fire, water, air, and earth. Perhaps it is an umbrella term for all mythical creatures, but the Swiss philosopher Paracelsus was the first one to divide it into four categories. In Tresse, we find our heroine Alex meeting two elemental creatures of air, Hannah and Ami. Hannah, according to the award-winning graphic novel series, came from the Habaga, Southwest Monsoon tribe, while Ami is from the Amihan, Northeast Monsoon tribe. Meanwhile, Alex also had a battle against Bagyon Kolimlim, an elemental creature of lightning who is the Sion of the powerful family led by Baigon, I mean Bagyon Electro, emissary of the goddess Ibu. Though most of our tribes during the pre-colonial era buried their dead through mummification, there are also some who put their deceased loved ones on a boat and cast them off the rivers. This reminds us of the Greek mythology about Charon, the boatman of the underworld who guides the soul in crossing the river Styx. But in our Tresse verse set in the modern period, the path to the underworld is via MRT. Here we find the emissary of the Manobo goddess of the underworld, Ibu, leading the train of souls and giving some advice to Alex, friendly or not. Make sure you have no more unfinished business before following the light. Ibwa First things first. Aswang is an umbrella term for carnivorous monsters and shapeshifters. But in the series, we encounter Ibwa, a leader of one of the criminal Aswang gangs that are living in the Metro Manila. Ibwa, according to the Tingyans, is human in form and shape but a corpse-eating spirit. 
they may stalk the house of a dying person and steal its body. To discourage the Igbo from taking the body of the deceased, wake and funeral superstitions include the burning of holes in the garments of the dead as well as putting a sharp object on top of the grave. The Tingians would also light a fire at the grave for nine nights and maybe that's where we got the superstition about keeping the candle burning during the wake and the nine day novena called Pasham. Is it friendly or not? Well, the answer is definitely not. Capre One mythical creature that has races and colonial roots is this one. The giant tree dwelling Capre, the Spaniards called non-believing Negrito ethnic people as Cafre, and somehow it became associated with really dark, hairy, and super scary mythical giants that smoke tobacco. Capres are believed to reside in ancient and huge trees like Acacia, Mingo, or Banyan called Balete in the Philippines. They are feared to be notorious kidnappers of beautiful women wandering the night. However, they are also believed to have magical wild stones that when you get fortune to acquire, will be at your mercy and grant your wishes. The question is, is it friendly or not? They will always be a struggle for power and that is not good in any friendship. Next up is the Katao. In Visayan mythology, the mere folk has three rankings. Serena, which is the mermaid Undine, Shokoi, which is the ugly merman, and Katao. The Kataos are the guardians of the waters and sea creatures. They have the ability to manipulate the tides, water pressure, waves, and even turn water into ice. They are more human-like in form but have gills and fins across their body. Is it friendly or not? They are very mischievous and would disguise themselves as fishermen asking for help. Be careful when you approach them as they might drown you. Laman Lupa Laman Lupa is actually an umbrella term for duende and duno. But in Trece, they were illustrated as earth mounds that are servant of the said earth elements. Is it friendly or not? Well, run for your life or be crushed into pieces. Manananggal Another type of aswang is a self-segmenting evil creature called manananggal. Most commonly believed to be females, the manananggal detach their torsos from their lower halves and fly into the night to eat unborn infants. Legend has it that when you hear wing flopping over your roof at night, there is a manananggal still at a distance from you but going towards your place. But when it becomes inaudible, that's when the manananggal is already above you, about to puncture your womb with her long tongue. Is it friendly or not? Definitely not. Make sure you have a buntot ng pagi, stingray tail, at arms reach to use as a weapon. Nuno Here is another term for the Filipino dwarves, which derive its name from the Nuno, ancestor or old man. In Trece, we find Nuno Samanhol, a totally different creature of this kind from Amang Paso, and even had a quick world war against each other. Actually, compared to dwarves which are more gnome-like in nature, Nuno is believed more widely dwellers of mounts. Similar to goblins of western culture, Nono can be very mean especially to those who damage or disturb their homes. Is it friendly or not? Well, don't forget to say tabi tabi po when excusing yourself and don't point your fingers on anything, and most especially on anyone. Next up is St. Elmo. Have you ever read about St. Elmo's fire? The weather phenomenon where you see floating plasma in an electric field. Well, we Filipinos also believe in that, but maybe not the scientific explanation about it. According to Philippine mythology, St. Elmo's are balls of fire that fight each other and appear where accidents or big arguments have happened. In the case of Alexandra Trece, her St. Elmo came from the great fire that happened in Binondo in the 1950s. In the Trece verse, the St. Elmo's are one call away when there is help needed for investigating supernatural forces. Is it friendly or not? Well, 
it's a case-to-case -case basis next stop is the sigbin sigbins are very fast tiny creatures that look like frog goat dog and kangaroo combined they are believed to live in jars and come out in the open during full moons they are loyal servants of aswangs and drink the blood of humans right out of their shadows is it friendly or not well if dogs are man's best friend they are definitely aswangs so don't you dare fall for their cuteness or lack of it what's worse they shape shift into massive sizes in the netflix series so absolutely not friendly so now we have tikbalang tikbalang is known to be half human half horse but not like those of Greece's beautiful centaurs. Tikbalang is another creature feared by women for being flirty and really scary. They are believed to lure their victims, hence the superstitious practice of wearing your clothes inside out when being lost on the road. Is it friendly or not? Well, legend has it that you have to ride the Tikbalang and pull three hairs out of its mane to tame it and be able to make it obey you. Now we have the Tiyanak. Perhaps having the most heartbreaking of Aswang origins is the Tiyanak. They are either unborn fetuses or less than a year old infants who were aborted or killed by their own mothers. Catholics believe that they are souls of babies who died without being baptized. They haunt their mothers of course but also women who want to have a kid by shape shifting into cute adorable babies the question is is it friendly or not well beware of its infant like whale because when you pick it up and wrap it around your arms it will turn into a hideous monster who will suck the blood out of you next up is the white lady the white lady is a popular ghost story with various versions not only in the Philippines but also around the world. In Trese, we find the most iconic of them in Pinoy urban legends. The one who hunts the Belete Drive in New Manila, Quezon City, legend has it that the particular white lady died in a car accident while driving along that particular road. Some say that she died while waiting for the arrival of her lover and some would associate her with one of the society it girls who used to live in the prominent village the consistent detail in every urban legend version is a taxi being stopped by a beautiful woman asking for a ride who at once glanced through the rear view mirror would suddenly appear drenched in blood and bruised is it friendly or not well we all need a gateway after the breakup cut her some slack now we have come to the last creature or monsters of our profile info so we have Siamol in the series we also encounter another leader of a different criminal Aswang gang Siamol this name is inspired by the Isnig people's belief about Siamol an evil spirit who swallows people alive is it friendly or not well when you encounter this gang <laughs> call Alexander Tressing 